Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Audacious Journey podcast. I'm here with John Broughton, the best video media guy I know. Uh, so right now, he owns his own production company. He works with USA Wrestling, uh, Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, and he does a ton of cool things. So uh, I'm going to let him introduce myself, and I'm super happy he's uh, coming on today. Hey, dude. Thanks for having me on. And thanks for uh, calling me the best media guy you know. That's a good compliment. <laughs> Uh, Yeah, so like you said, I mean, I work with a couple different um, clients, kind of done a whole bunch of different things, Uh, followed Ben Askren for his UFC career. Um, So sick. That was fun. That was wild. Uh, All the way through the Jake Paul fight. Um, And then I do stuff for Nittany Lion Wrestling Club right now, done stuff for USA Wrestling in the past, Uh, Scrap Life, my main client right now, do awesome stuff with them. And all the athletes here in State College, and dude, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I really love my job and and kind of telling stories through video, and I feel like I'm starting to evolve into a a filmmaker and instead of just you know a content producer, which is really exciting. Yeah, that's so cool. So I wanted to ask you, like, what was like your favorite moment that you ever like captured on on film, whether it's like wrestling or like UFC? Ben Askren, I know you uh, went to the World Championships in Norway. Like You've done so many cool things. Yeah, dude. So the World Championships in Norway, this is this is like melancholy. Like, um, So, yeah, filming the World Championships and seeing like USA guys win, that has yeah. to be just it, right? That's like the coolest thing. But um, this year I filmed uh, Thomas Gilman winning his, his first world title, right? Yeah. And – so insane all this like um the celebration in the back like i look at the footage and i literally can't help but tear up but this is this is tragic i i stayed up all night editing part two of the norway world championships documentary and the hard drive overheats and i lose all the footage and so now i've sent it into this data recovery um uh service and yeah. they've sent me back a hard drive. I plug it in. The hard drive doesn't work. I'm like, dude, oh, they've already billed me. So I send it back, and then they're like, oh, it's just formatted for a Windows computer. And so now it's in the mail, and I'm going to get it any day. And I just, like, cannot – I'm so excited slash, like, I don't want to get my hopes up. It's Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a wild, wild little ride I'm going on right now. <laughs> huh. Dude, that's, that's crazy. Um, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> – You've been you've been like all over the world, and and I I know like in the background we were talking earlier of like all the places you've been, but what's been your favorite place to to film like wrestling? To film wrestling, uh, I would say Norway was really really cool. Norway yeah. was was awesome. Nice. France, I remember you telling me a story that you were like hopping in like there's like saunas outside, and you were like oh, hopping in yeah. the water. Like what what was all that? So it, saunaing is is like really big in Norway, and. Yeah. Um, and so basically they'll, they have kind of this culture where it's like, oh, let's do a, a sauna meeting where like the company will just go for lunch and then they'll sauna and they'll do their meeting in the sauna or like, you know, it's, it's common practice to like go hang out and, and sauna. So they've got these, these saunas that are on the water, right? Yeah. And Norway is like kind of, it, it's really north, colder weather, right? So the water's freezing. And so you go from one of the hottest saunas I've ever been in right? Like baking in the sauna and you, you've got like a clear glass. You can see all the water. It's beautiful. And you get out of just baking in the sauna and you dive right into the ice cold water and it's like you get hot right into cold. It's, it's sweet. And your body feels so good after. I'm like, man, if I lived in Norway, I would do that every day. It would be insane. That's so, that's so cool. I'm going to have to go up there and try it out sometime because that sounds pretty sick. Absolutely. Sauning is so good for your health too. I mean, like your yeah. muscle recovery, heat shock proteins. Um, yeah, it's it's like essential. So getting that that's and interesting. Ice cold. because like I don't know about you when when I was younger. Like my coaches would always say, "Don't sauna to lose weight. Like it's terrible for you. It gets drained." Like what? Mm-hmm. What's your like opinion on that? Because I I don't know. I felt like absolutely. I felt terrible when I when I sauna. Yeah. So I mean, like cutting weight for wrestling, like. <laughs> my bathroom was like always a sauna you know what i mean like (laughs) screw the rules i'm like i'm cutting weight i'm turning the shower on hot and i'm just making the bathroom a sauna um 
So, I mean, no, I, I think cutting weight, it's easier. You want to like put as little stress on your body as possible when cutting weight. Yeah. Like I, I started cutting weight. I would like run stairs and okay. then I realized like, no, you want to like bike and do things that are low stress and low intent, low intensity, but keeping the sweat going. Right. And I think if you can put a sauna suit on or get in, in a sauna, those are good things. Obviously, for high school kids, you know, you don't want them to take it too far and, like, hurt themselves or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but then if you go into, like, just outside of wrestling, you go into, like, muscle recovery and performance. No, like, saunas are really, really good for both of those things. First of all, recovery and blood flow, uh, the added heat is – I'm not going to go into the scientific breakdown because I'm <laughs> – I honestly don't know. All I know is that it produces more heat shock proteins, which make your muscles stronger and yeah. more durable, and then it reduces injury. So that's that's why I do it. And um, I'm trying to get into ice baths as well because those are also really good. Hmm. Yeah, I used to ice bath a lot when I was running it and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to change the subject up here a little bit. So Go for you it. and I had the same college coach, uh, mm -hmm. Coach Jock. Obviously, you were at Wisconsin Whitewater, and, and I was at West Point. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite memory you had with, with Shock at, when you were at Whitewater? Um, okay, I'll, I'll throw two out there. I've got a funny one, and then I've got uh, <laughs> one that is a little more serious, but just like, uh, I don't know, speaks to his character. So the, the funny one is that don't drive home with Shock from a wrestling tournament when it's snowing because he thinks it's hilarious to drift all the way to one side in the bus and then drift all the way to the other side. Of the bus. He did the same thing to us and we were in Wyoming, bro, and it was so like icy, I was cold and he would do it and our whole team would be like, I'm not driving the shock, man. He's gonna yeah. <laughs> He's he's crazy. But he's kinda like up there and he's just kinda like laughing. He's like ha 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 You're like you're like, Don't kill us, dude, come on. <laughs> Um, so it was funny for like two drifts after that. You're like, dude, come on, come on. Um, so that was, that was a funny one. Uh, as a coach, we kind of butted heads like coach athlete. Um, I thought it was really at first I would say, and, um, I, it was just me being kind of an immature freshman and not really being grateful for all the effort that he was putting into me. Yeah. And, um, Later on in my career, I had some family issues that kind of surfaced, and I was going through a really tough time. And then with my injuries, I was going through a really tough time. And uh, he was he was more than just there for me. He was like, you know, basically just continued to remind me that, hey, we all care about you, and um, you're going to get through this. This is just a tough time in your life. So, um, yeah, I always really appreciate that, um, that kindness that he showed me in, in those moments. So... Uh, yeah, really grateful for him as a coach and as a person. Yeah, I mean, he, he's an awesome guy, awesome coach. And now he's on at Bellarmine, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully he does good things on there. The, the roads aren't as icy there, so maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the wrestlers will never know. <laughs> the yeah, wrestlers no. down there won't understand. <laughs> they, they won't, man. Uh, so, yeah, dude, I think, so I think you're like uh, media production company is super sick and uh, you know, we talked about a little bit how, you know, you're at where you're at today um, after Whitewater, but where do you see your company, you know, in like five years on the road? Like what type of things would you like to be doing? Um, so I think I mentioned it a little bit before. I, I'm, I'm starting to transition into like bigger projects and the more long form uh, yeah. things. That's a, like, I'd say that's like one of the main transitions I'm, I'm trying to make is becoming more of a filmmaker. But the other thing is I just brought on my first uh, like full-time employee. So I hired an assistant, and he actually uh, sits right over there in the office, um, and he's killing it. His name is Ronan Bell. Um, so okay. grateful for him and all the hard work he's putting in, and, uh, and he's a great dude, funny dude. So it, right now I'm kind of looking at the business a little bit differently because there are certain things that I can delegate to him, and then this summer I'll have an intern coming in. And so there's wow. other things that I can, I can delegate to Danny, the intern. And so um, that is really helpful because now I can start looking at the businesses a little bit differently. You, know, you can't really build the business and work on the business when you work in the business. Um, yeah. So 
I've been just absolutely grinding and being like, no, I just like, I gotta put hard work in. I just gotta put more hours in than everyone else and that'll be like success. And when I was first starting out, that was the recipe for success, right? I say yes yeah. to every opportunity. I say absolutely, I can do that. Doesn't matter if you pay me, I know this is a good opportunity. I'm gonna get to the next level by taking this opportunity. Right. Now, I've looking at it more as like the health of the company and not just my own opportunities. And so that shift in mindset has been really productive. Um, I read a book, um, Askren actually um, recommended this for me. It's yeah. called The E-Myth. And basically it's, the whole book is about working on your business, not in your business, like I said, and kind of having that next level of thinking and building towards the future. So five years from now, I definitely want to be working with a lot of the clients I work with now, actually, but um, doing a little bit bigger projects and um, and then having more people on staff so that we can tackle more work. Yeah, dude, that's so sick. And you brought up something that's pretty cool that I, that I think about a lot. Like sometimes when I think of success, I think like, all right, I got to just do more than everyone. Like if I do more hours and, and I do more and I, and I don't go out on the weekends and and I just like grind it out and I'm the hardest working guy out there, I'll, I'll be the most successful guy. And that, you know, isn't really true sometimes. I've like come to know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a strategy. It's, uh, it's like, it, yeah, it's a balance. Like um, um, some people call it like finesse or like um, fluidity. The, um, I think of it as like effectiveness. You know, you can be yeah. David Goggins run through a brick wall tough but if you're not like effective, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I put in 50 hours of work this week. I put in 80 hours of work this week. But it's like, okay, but at the end of the day, like how much did you get done? And I'm, right. I'm always the guy where it's like start to finish of the day, I'm working. I'm up at 7. I'm working probably until 7, 8 at night every, every night, right? Yeah. And so like the – Living in my office is, is normal for me, right? But I also have to be effective. I can't just be like punching a clock, right? So a lot of times I'll get the majority of my production and like creative work done um, before I even look at my phone in the morning. Like we were talking yeah. about this before we hopped on. I don't I don't I know. It's so good. For like the first three hours of the day. And so in the in the first three hours of the day, I'm able to be creative. I'm, I don't have outside things, you know, affecting me. Um and, and I, I'm able to just focus on the work. And then in the afternoon, I can do more things like meetings, podcasts, um, yeah. and then inter, interesting things like that and like planning, shoots, um, stuff that, that is, I'd say it requires just kind of a different level of thinking where yeah. connection and your phone is, is needed. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I think those are super important things to, to understand and, and know, know about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so like the last question I want to ask you is, you know, so far in your life, like what has been audacious about your journey? When I mean by like audacity, the definition of that is like the bold willingness to, you know, take a risk. So like what's been like the biggest risk that you've taken that is like kind of helped propel you to where, to where, yeah, to where you are today in your career? Biggest risk. Um, well, I think that one, I don't think that we should ever stop taking risks. You know, yeah. I think that our ability to, to take on risk is um, is what propels us forward in life. You know, it's kind of that risk reward balance. Um, the more you can take on one, the more you get of the other. So, I, I'd say taking a lot. The biggest risk I've taken is, um, and now it seems like, of course, I, well, I would do this. Uh, was just starting this company and going really, really hard on. On video production like a lot of times now I've got kind of cool camera gear so I don't like think I look like as big of an idiot but at the beginning yeah. like I looked like like an idiot with the camera right I was like pointing <laughs> it weird ways and I was like doing weird things with it and uh, and like somebody sends me a video of like what the heck is John doing you know it's like <laughs> um, the dumber I look the better the shot looks right yeah so I'd say that risk of just kind of like going like, no, I might look stupid doing this. I might take a huge risk and bet on myself yeah. um, and not get like a, a job, but just focus on developing myself, my skills, my career, looking stupid, but then yeah. getting getting the rewards from that. So See, that say, that's so powerful. Like yeah. sometimes you look stupid while you're doing things. People like question like, oh, you know, why, why are you doing all these things? But like the reward from it, you know, is pretty rewarding. And then like what comes out on the other side is, is pretty cool. 
Um, Absolutely. And obviously, like I remember when I was at West Point, man, it was so cool to see the, the film that you put together. Everyone's like, oh, dude, John's coming. We're getting some sick footage. And um, it really, and people love it. People look forward to it. Um, so you bring a lot of like, you know, value and joy into people's lives. And, I'm sure, and, and I, we liked it. And I'm sure like all your wrestlers, you know, down at State College and USA wrestlers love it as well. Dude, I absolutely love working with West Point. You guys are killers. I mean, you guys are badass. <laughs> it's awesome. And, uh, and one of my favorite Thanks. pictures actually is like you guys were all huddled around the computer and Shuck sent it to me. And it's um, it's like the, the guys are about to watch the Army Navy video you put together. And everyone's like, all excited. And like there's this big smile on Luke's face. And I was just like, <laughs> man, like that, that gets me so hyped because I enjoy watching the video so much, you know. Yeah. And so having somebody else enjoy it that much, it, it means a lot. And I got a cool story about you. Um, I'll tell the, the <laughs> listeners, dude. So practice is over and you guys are all doing like this conditioning circuit. Everyone's tired, right? Everyone's exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's been a long, hard practice. And then they're like, all right, planks, right? Oh, dude, I remember dude, this. Insane. So first of all, I feel like I can plank for like three, four minutes hard. And then I'm like, yeah, done. absolutely just done and some people went that long and then some people started to go longer and i was like all right well aren't you tough right and then 10 minutes go by and it's like it's like holy crap this is insane then like 15 minutes go by and it's down to like two people ryan and one other dude and i was like oh dang and the other guy pops off and it was going on like 25 minutes and you're still planking <laughs> and everyone's like you got to do it. You got to make it to 30. <laughs> and, and then, uh, dude, at that point, it's not even like, it's not pain. It's not strength. It's not conditioning. It's just mental toughness. Put yourself in the zone. I'm going to absolutely crush this thing. And so watching you just kind of compete against yourself, that was, that was really cool. That was like insane. And getting footage Man. of it too, where you're, there's one clip where you're like bobbing your head and I'm like, yeah. oh, man, this is intense. Well, do you remember what Shuck did, though? When he put the he put that 25-pound weight on my back with two minutes <laughs> left. I was he like, was like 30 I'm minutes fall, left. <laughs> so he put the plate on your back. <laughs> oh, oh well, my I gritted, I gritted that part out. But, yeah, that was that was rough. And I was hurting for a few days, man. I'm like, I, really, I don't know if I should have done that. But it's a good story <laughs> to tell. Um, Being too tough for your body is a good thing. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks, man. I really uh, appreciate you, you know, coming on today, and and I, uh, you know, wish the best of luck to you, and hopefully I can see you soon and, and get some good uh, footage, you know, with USA Wrestling, with uh, Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, and hopefully you're back up at West Point too, and absolutely uh, help those boys out. Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, thanks for having me on, and uh, really appreciate talking to you, bro. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in, and uh, next weekend um, we'll have the Audacious Journey podcast on Friday. Thanks.